Ten teams battled their way through the qualifiers to get to this point, the Junkyard Joust main event, heat number two. Hi everybody, I'm your announcer Aaron Yanda. Last season's world champions, the Emerald Undercurrent, are back to defend their title and hopefully make it to the finals again if they're lucky. But there's nine other teams that want to get into that final as well, and they are going to face some stiff competition. Let's take a look at who's competing today. First up, it's the Emerald Undercurrent. This team of low, lightweight cars surprised everyone in Season 1 and managed to take the crown. They were allowed to substitute one car from their team out, and they have chosen Tire Fryer to replace the Painos. The other four competitors are Eye Candy, Salt Shaker, Berserk, and of course, Lamelt, the main reason Emerald Undercurrent is here right now. Massive Transit blew through the competition in their qualifier with a combination of long and heavy vehicles. With the Cadillac Escalade, the Articulated Bus, the UBE Industries Double Trailer, Transporter, and the Mini Bago. The Caped Cruisers are a team of undercutters with a couple surprises up their sleeves. Featuring Cloak and Dagger, Ground Effects, the Bishop, Superman, and Aquaman. The Shredheads are a team of lightweight survivors that won their qualifier. Featuring 24 Hours, Carbide, Voltage Spike, Track Ripper, and Cyber Speeder. They See Me Rollin' is a flashy team with a lot of variety in their ranks, which makes them survivors. Featuring this bejeweled 53 Cadillac, the Revrod, MVP of its qualifier, the 77 Dodge Van, Papa Wheelie and Rising Heat. The Copperheads are a team of unpredictable cars causing copper chaos wherever they go. With Nucleon, the Chrysler Atlantic, Triple Threat, the 55 Jukebox, and Custom Spoiler. Wiener Magic is a team that coasted to success with the help of their famous members. With the Wienermobile, Starsky and Hutch, the DeLorean, Ecto-1, and Yoda. Junkyard Domestic Market is a team of Japanese vehicles with a secret weapon. The Skyline GTR, the 86, Honda NSX Type R, the Aquarium Truck, and the Sakura Sprinter, which has a secret weapon in the back, the Mazda 787B. Forklift and Friends is a team of wild vehicles that feature Forklift and his antics, with, of course, Forklift, the Ford Box Truck, the Garbage Truck, Toe Jam, and Rocket Oil. Santa's Slayers is a team that showed up back around the holidays, but they survived the qualifier, so they're here now. With Rockin' Santa Sled, Santa's Hot Tub, Big Chill, the 55 Chevy Townsman, and Screamliner. The rules for Junkyard Joust are simple, survive. Each team takes turns sending a car down the track. The teams get to choose which car they send down, and that's where the strategy comes in. If you're sideways or upside down at the end of the round, you're out. Each team gets points for each car that they have left at the end of a round. Here's a chart that shows who you guys think is going to win this match. Massive Transit, 38%, over Emerald Undercurrent at 23 and Junkyard Domestic Market at 14%. Well, let's get this match started and find out if you were right. Today's running order order is up, so we're going to start off with They See Me Rolling with the 77 Dodge Van. The van showed a lot of survivability in its qualifier round and uh, did a great job for its team. Next up is Superman for Caped Cruisers. The literal Man of Steel slams into the back of that van and takes his place on the track. Custom Spoiler's got a little bit of undercutting for the Copperheads here. Custom Spoiler does indeed go right under both of the cars on the track, but does not manage to eliminate either of them. Next up is the Sakura Sprinter, Junkyard Domestic Market sending down their secret weapon already this early in the match. This is going to be a factor, and it deploys flawlessly and even knocks Superman upside down and almost off the track. A lot of people curious how that Mazda plays into if this vehicle gets eliminated or not. I like to think of that Mazda as just an, a bumper for that truck that's just lying on the track. So the status of the Mazda does not apply to whether or not that truck's eliminated. Ecto-1's up first for Wiener Magic. Ecto-1 takes the plunge and look at that recovery. Hits the back of the truck and somehow manages to go upright. That low center of gravity really paying dividends for the Ecto-1. Now Rocket Oil's going down for forklift and friends. They know that this heavy vehicle can handle a car like that Mazda. 
And it does exactly that. Look at that. Rocket oil lid on top of the car or whatever you want to call that. It flies up in the air, pushes that Mazda back, almost back inside the truck. And now a big hit's coming from the articulated bus for massive transit. And it was a big hit. It was so big that it pushed Rocket Oil off the track. Rocket Oil was a vehicle that many thought could not be eliminated, and it's not looking good for him right now. Screamliner for Santa Slayers slots nicely onto the track, pushes that Mazda back into the Sakura Sprinter a little bit. And I'm kind of still reeling from the fact that Rocket Oil was just pushed right off the track like that and eliminated. That was really not something that we expected to happen in here now track ripper is pushing the articulated bus off of the mazda into the truck almost buzzerk now for the emerald undercurrent buzzerk with that saw sends track ripper head over heels off the track i think that saw got a piece of the bottom of his car and now he's upside down off the track and buzzerk just goes off to the right totally safe Here's a look at all the vehicles that were never eliminated during the qualifying stage. It's always fun to keep track of which ones managed to keep their perfect record. Well, we already know Rocket Oil is out. 53 Cadillac now for They See Me Rolling. 53 Cadillac gives a nice big push to Screamliner and manages to get that articulated bus off the track. Now they're up to the Mazda behind that Sakura Sprinter. Cloak and Dagger now for Caped Cruisers. Cloak and Dagger pushes that Screamliner upside down on top of the bus. And there's a chance he could recover from that, but a good hit there from Cloak and Dagger. Now up 55 Jukebox for the Copperheads, never eliminated in its qualifier. Jukebox gives a nice big hit and actually pushes one of They See Me Rollins' cars, that Cadillac, upside down. Just a lot of pressure there, the heaviness of that car squeezing those two together and causing some nice destruction. Now up for JD. It's the Honda NSX. The Honda takes it to the back of the jukebox, sends him right off the track, upside down. A great hit right there. And that car that was never eliminated, well, it's eliminated now, most likely. Starsky and Hutch now for Wiener Magic. Starsky and Hutch collides with two of the cars up front, manages to get that Honda off the track, and the Cadillac is still upside down. And Cloak and Dagger a little bit off the track on top of those buses, but safe for the moment. Ford box truck now for Forklift and Friends. The Ford box truck just smashes into the back of Starsky and flips right over. Too heavy in the front and flops over. Bad hit for Forklift and friends there. Not a great job by that vehicle. Forklift may be a little disappointed in his friend. The Cadillac Escalade now for massive transit. This thing is heavy and long. A massive hit there from the Cadillac, but it doesn't really do that much. More than just kind of throw him off the track. Starsky just stays there, and that Escalade now is partially off the track. 55 Chevy Townsman for Santa Slayers. Watch out for that tree. And the tree goes flying, and so does the Escalade. Just drives straight off the track over the corpse of Track Ripper. And that tree is now up on top of the Mazda. Hopefully it's okay. And now the Cyber Speeder is going to take to the track for the Shredheads. Cyber Speeder doesn't get a lot of action right there. Does a little pushing, but can't go anywhere. But slotted into the track fairly nicely. Now up for the Emerald Undercurrent. It's going to be Eye Candy. Eye Candy pushes Cyber Speeder straight off the track, upside down. A nice, gentle little tug. And he's done. He's totally upside down, might not be able to recover from that. Papa Wheelie now, for they see me rolling. Papa Wheelie just slams into Eye Candy, sends him skittering across the Sakura Sprinter, and Eye Candy recovers, but unfortunately, Papa Wheelie does not. And now here comes Aquaman for the Caped Cruisers. Good slam there from Aquaman, hits the back of that Townsman, pushes it back up by the tree that already came off of the top of it. Maybe he'll be able to retrieve that now. Next up for the Copperheads, it's the Chrysler Atlantic. The Chrysler pops into the back of Aquaman, pushes that Townsman off the track a little bit. Not a whole lot of other action there. It also looks like Cloak and Dagger starting to go sideways over there. Skyline GTR now for JDM. Skyline plows into the back of the Chrysler and takes his place on the track. Nice slotted in. Pretty good spot right there for him. Yoda's up now for Wiener Magic. Yoda flops upside down on his face after hitting the Skyline in the back. The Skyline has pushed forward a little bit on top of other cars, but it's okay. And Aquaman's starting to go up a little bit. Garbage truck now for Forklift and Friends. Let's see if he can do better than that box truck. 
and he does a little bit better. He plows three cars off of the track, pushes the box truck completely upside down, and drives off, but he is a halfway to being sideways here, so it could be bad for him. The UBE Industrials double trailer, 145 grams, get ready for a large hit. That was huge. Look at the cars go flying. The Chrysler just pops upside down, still on the track. Aquaman flies over in the tires, and the garbage truck makes a recovery. So mixed results there for the UBE. Rockin' Santa Sled now for Santa Slayers. Rockin' Santa Sled hits the back of that heavy vehicle and just dumbly pops upside down and goes off the track, dead. That was a waste of a turn there for Santa Slayers. Oh well, on to Carbide for the Shredhead. Carbide hits the back of UBE and cannot do anything. That thing is too heavy and he goes backwards. Now he's gonna take a big hit here from the big one himself, Lamelt for Emerald Undercurrent. What's Lamelt gonna get up to? Lamelt sends Carbide off the back of UBE, but Carbide makes a nice recovery for the moment. And now we've got Lamelt set up on the track. Rising heat. Gonna try to get under him, does it. Goes all the way under Lamel and pushes him off the track, perhaps neutralizing that threat. That was a great hit there for They See Me Rolling. The Bishop is up now for Cape Cruisers. Oh man, what a hit! The Bishop pops the top off of his vehicle. That hit was so hard. But the bottom of his car keeps going and Rising Heat gets popped up and almost off the track, but he's still on it. And look at the bottom of that car. It's got a little ramp in the back too and the shell of the car is still on the track. It's gonna get in the way for Triple Threat for the Copperheads. Let's see what happens. Triple Threat sends the shell of that car just flying and goes flying himself. Part of his engine falls out and then somehow how he makes a recovery. After all that, he just flops right over and he's like, yeah, it was nothing, no problem. I'm the best. Amazing hit there for Triple Threat. Aquarium truck now for JDM. Aquarium truck just a little bit too heavy in the front. Flips over on the back of the Bishop and is sideways. There's still a chance he could uh, recover from that because he's still on the track. DeLorean now for Wiener Magic. Let's go back to the future. The DeLorean slams into the aquarium truck and just knocks him senseless off the track sideways and then sort of drives off himself probably to safety. Now we still got the ramp set up on the back of uh, Bishop. Forklift now for Forklift and Friends. Forklift! Oh man, that's tough to see. Forklift, who's had all this agility in previous encounters, cannot manage to get off the back of that car successfully and just flops over sideways. Very disappointing hit there for Forklift. Mini Bago now for Massive Transit. Mini Bago knocks the Bishop all the way up to the crates, just sends him through the air up to level seven. Annihilates that vehicle. Did he make a recovery though? He did not. He's upside down and Mini Bago is sideways, but wow, what a hit there. Santa's hot tub. Santa hits the back of Mini Bago. He's not going anywhere. He's just going to sit there on the track. They're all locked in on the track because of those massive transit vehicles. Shredheads now are going to send down the 24 hours. 24 hours knocks Santa off the track, but uh, he's safe and he can't really do much else. So he's just going to sit there. Salt Shaker for Emerald Undercurrent. Salt Shaker doesn't do much. Just pushes into the back of 24 hours and backs up a little bit. Not a whole lot of action for him. And now he's going to take a hit from the Rev Rod. Or they see me rolling. Rev Rod, the MVP of this qualifier, could not be eliminated. Rev Rod annihilates Salt Shaker, sends him up towards triple threat, but he makes a nice recovery. The lightness of that car making him a little bit more stable in, as he's hurled through the air. Ground effects for Cape Cruisers. Ground effect slides underneath the rev rod, pops him up on top of Mini Bago, and now that car is upside down. The rev rod is upside down. Is he just toying with us? He might be. Nucleon now for the Copperheads. Ooh, a nice pop from Nucleon into the back of ground effects, and it actually has a chain reaction effect. And of course, you knew it, Rev Rod has recovered, no problem. And now the 86 is up for Junkyard Domestic Market. The 8-6 knocks Nucleon off the track, but Nucleon makes an impressive recovery. And now that 8-6 is starting to go underground effects. The Wienermobile is up now for Wiener Magic. Wienermobile hits the back of 8-6, pushes him forward a little bit, and ground effects is getting moved off the track. 
toe jam for forklift and friends. Ooh, toe jam slides underneath the Wienermobile and puts him up in the air and then he lands sideways and I don't know if he's gonna be able to recover from that. The 8-6 is balanced precariously right now. Transporter is up now for massive transit. This is a fairly heavy vehicle. And the transporter transports itself right off the track and sideways and probably out of this match. He got caught up on the back bumper of toe jam, kind of got hooked there and then was forced backwards off the track, almost certainly out of the match. Big chill now for Santa's Slayers. This thing's got skis instead of wheels on the front. Ooh, big hit there from Big Chill in the back of Mini Bago, and all it does is send the 8-6 more off the track and upside down. Mini Bago just going down the track sideways now, but not going off the track. Voltage Spike takes it to the back of Big Chill, and Big Chill manages to get those skis underneath Mini Bago and stay alive in this match. And it's the final car of the round, the brand new tire fryer for Emerald Undercurrent. The Undercurrent hoping that this car will do better than the Paynos did for them. And it does a great job of eliminating that big chill vehicle from the match. That was the end of the round. Let's take a look at the wreckage. There's been quite a few cars taken out in this round. A total of 21 cars eliminated, but Emerald Undercurrent does not have any of those. Cape Cruisers lost two, Shredheads two, They See Me Rolling two, and Copperheads two. Big losses for Santa Slayers, Forklift and Friends, and JDM. Massive Transit and Wiener Magic only lost two apiece. Taking a look at the scoreboards, the Emerald Undercurrent are topping the board with five points, of course, one point for each of their surviving cars, and then it's mostly threes on down to the twos. Running order is up for round two. We're going to start off with the Emerald Undercurrent, who had an amazing first round. Not surprised. They are the world champions of season one. Lamelt is going to start us off and head on down almost to the front of the track. The back of that car is a threat to most vehicles. Let's see if Cloak and Dagger can overcome it. Cloak and Dagger does actually manage to overcome the back of that car, kind of wedging it in between the bumper and the front of his car and uh, he's kind of propped up on the side of the track there curbside could be a problem Nucleon piles into the back of Cloak and Dagger and almost goes sideways off the track but at the last second manages to make a recovery but uh, he's kind of prone right now so that could be an issue when this giant heavy double trailer smashes into him the UB just annihilates Cloak and Dagger and Nucleon. Cloak and Dagger split into two pieces, both of them upside down, and I don't even see Nucleon. Where did Nucleon go? Rising Heat up now for They See Me Rolling. Rising Heat pushes the UBE trailer, which was sideways, upside down. That's a tough loss right there. And there's Nucleon hiding underneath, right side up. Amazing. And now the Ecto-1's gonna hit the track for Wiener Magic. The Ecto-1 takes Rising Heat off of the track completely, but Rising Heat makes a nice recovery there. And now the Ecto-1 is propped up on the back of Lamelt. It could be a problem, but maybe not for that vehicle. Carbide now. Carbide hits the Ghostbusters up on top of Lamelt. And the Ecto's just gonna sit there. It's just gonna park right there, I think. Forklift and friends are gonna send down the garbage truck next. Heavy hit from the garbage truck, but there's nowhere to go, and he almost flips over, but manages to make a recovery halfway off the track. Not a bad hit there. Secure a sprinter now for JDM. They got the secret weapon, and they know how to use it. The Sakura Sprinter slams into the Carbide and pushes him up now where the Ecto-1 was. Garbage truck is relatively safe, and the secret weapon does not deploy. All right, I guess they don't know how to, to uh, use their secret weapon after all. Santa's hot tub is gonna smash into that Mazda in the back of the Sakura Sprinter, and it's starting to deploy, kind of on top of Santa's hot tub. I don't know how much help that's gonna be. Buzzerk's gonna hit the road for Emerald Undercurrent. Here comes the saw. And I don't even know what happened there. Not much. I guess the Mazda was just pushed out of the back of the truck. And it seems like that secret weapon has been disabled. Nice job there by those teams. Cape Cruisers now are gonna send out Aquaman. Aquaman takes Berserk out. He's upside down, but he's not off the track, so we, uh, it remains to be seen what exactly will happen to Berserk right there. Now look at this. Santa's hot tub has parked inside that truck. I don't know if there's a much safer place you're gonna find on the track. That's an amazing job there by Santa Slayers. That car will be around next round. 
and triple threat slams into Aquaman. Actually makes Berserk go right side up, so not a very successful hit there by triple threat. Just basically saved two cars from uh, being eliminated. Cadillac Escalade now, 106 grams of heavy steel. The Cadillac Escalade just annihilates Triple Threat, hops him up into the air over and over, and he bounces and he bounces like a top, and then he goes upside down, that engine falls out again, and then look at this, he pops over right side up. How is that even possible? What an amazing play there by Triple Threat, that car is crazy. 77 Dodge Van now for They See Me Rolling. He just pops into the back of that Escalade and pushes Santa farther into the Sakura Sprinter, but there's really nowhere to go when you got a big vehicle like that on the track. So far this round, a lot of survivors out there on the track right now. Starsky and Hutch for Wiener Magic. Oh, ouch, the 77 Dodge van cannot survive the impact from Starsky and Hutch, and it is now sideways on the side of the track. Good hit there from Starsky and Hutch. Starsky and Hutch gonna take a voltage spike now, and they get spiked indeed, but manage to stay on the track. Voltage spike also locked into the track. Cars are backing up. Here comes Toe Jam for Forklift and Friends. Toe Jam smacks into the back of Voltage Spike, puts him off the track, but not upside down. But all it would take is one little tap to push him sideways, so we'll see what happens there. And now we're gonna see the Honda NSX go down for JDM. The Honda almost gets Toe Jam off the track, but Toe Jam manages to stabilize at the last second and stick it, but he's curbside, so that could be bad. Chevy Townsman got that tree back up top. The Chevy Townsman knocks NSX off the track, but he survives, and Toe Jam is in a little bit of trouble right there. A tree managed to stay on top of the car. That's pretty good. Salt Shaker for Emerald. Salt Shaker causes some action way up front. If you see Carbide actually falls off the track, but is fine. And it looks like Toe Jam is probably gonna be okay. Ground effects with that low front now for Cape Cruisers. Oh boy, look at that car go up in the air, probably to a level seven, maybe even an eight. But this time Salt Shaker is not able to recover and he's upside down up on top of Aquaman there. Great hit there for ground effects. May have just gotten the first elimination for Emerald Undercutters. Custom spoiler slides underneath ground effects and pops that townsman up in the air and sideways. Doesn't look good for the townsman right now, but ground effects is probably out. Yep, he's out. And now custom spoiler is locked into the track, but that's a tough position for ground effects to be in right now because articulated bus. Articulated bus annihilates three of the cars on the track. Most of them survive, it looks like. Yep, all three of them made a recovery. Ground effects is recovery being the most impressive right there. And speaking of impressive recoveries, it's RevRod. RevRod just does a nice hit on the back of that bus, takes his position on the track. Is he gonna get tossed up in the air? Well, we're about to find out. The DeLorean's gonna hit him in the back. DeLorean smashes RevRod over the top of the bus and RevRod makes it a supremely easy recovery. Just pops right over there. You can't really do anything to that vehicle. And we're down to the last three cars of round two. 24 hours for the shred heads. Can't do much. Just hits the back of the DeLorean and doesn't do anything else. It's a nice solid line of vehicles on the track right now. Emerald Undercurrent has the next two cars because they had five left. They're going to have to play against their own team. Tire Fryer is going to take a hit. And bam, 24 hours goes flying through the air, lands it though, lands it right side up on one of his own teammates who is sideways currently. Eye Candy is the final car for this round. And Eye Candy is careful enough not to end his own teammate, but he does end the DeLorean. That car was hard to eliminate in the qualifiers, but it's gone now. Let's take a look at the wreckage. Eight cars eliminated this round, which is not that many, all things considered. Take a look at the aftermath. Emerald loses their first car in Salt Shaker. They See Me Rolling only lost one that round. They are still doing pretty well. Everybody else has two left on this page. Cracks are starting to show in Santa's Slayers and Wiener Magic, each with only one vehicle apiece. Massive Transit is down to two, along with Forklift and JDM.
Emerald Undercurrent continues to outpace its competitors with a total of 13 points. Copperheads fairly close behind at 9. All 10 teams and still a lot of cars in this match. There are a bunch of rounds left to come, and that will be in the next episode of Junkyard Jest. These teams are going to continue to battle for dominance in an epic match that's going quite a few rounds. I won't tell you how many. And then after that, we're going to go on to Main Event Heat 3, where you're going to see the return of Graveyard Smash and, of course, Winnebago. Thank you to all my patrons. You are the reason I'm able to keep making this show, and thank you all for watching. Keep an eye out for Junkyard Joust merch in the near future. It's coming. This has been Aaron Yanda. Have a great week, and see you next time.